but let's start uh, by putting the focus uh, then on earnings action. In the earnings space, it was a weak third quarter coming in for IDFC First Bank. They posted a loss uh, in excess of about uh, 1,500 crores and also saw a 95% year-on-year jump coming in on the provisioning number. But they did see healthy growth coming in the net interest income coming in at about 11.45 crores for the quarter gone by. We have V. Vedinathan, Managing Director and CEO at the bank, joining in to break this all down for us. Very good to have you on the show, Mr. Vedinathan. And I, you know, let's start with the, the profitability number because I understand that a large part of this was, uh, you know, uh, uh, in order, uh, due to the kind of accounting changes that were undertaken post-merger, this being, of course, the first uh, quarter that you're reporting following that merger, um, due to intangible assets, I believe about 2,600 crore of goodwill was what was transferred to the P&L. Help us understand what your profit or loss figure would have looked like if we uh, account for this. No, first of all, I think we need to explain what the item it's, is in the first place. Uh, so that uh, your viewers and investors uh, get the right understanding. Uh, you know, Capital First had a net worth of uh, uh, close to about 2,400 crores at the time the merger was announced. And uh, there is a certain premium that was paid to Capital First based on what the market prices at that point of time of the respective institutions were. Uh, this uh, premium, which is basically the premium paid to shareholders over the book value of uh, Capital First, it represents the, uh, the goodwill that was paid as part of the merger process by IDFC Bank shareholders. Uh, that goodwill in normal course of life could actually be on the books because Capital First was and the business model of Capital First continues to be on the combined balance sheet would have continued to be of use for many, many years to come. It could have continued and there could have been no need for impairment. The reason for impairment uh, 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 came up uh, because of the uh, fact that if the uh, a bank carries goodwill on its books, then it can't, it can't declare dividends. So as a prudent measure, the, uh, the board and the management came to a conclusion that we will take this amount of the, uh, you know, uh, charge it to the P&L. Uh, but in a net worth sense, I must clarify to you that there has been no impairment at all uh, because this is a top line entry of goodwill and charged off to the bottom line. There is no, it's a neutral item. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the net worth of the combined institution has actually gone up by uh, 3,600 crores. It has gone up pre uh, standalone of IDFC Bank was uh, rupees 14,700 crores, and post merger the core uh, tier one net worth of the bank has increased to rupees 18,300 crores. That's a growth of rupees 3,600 crores because of the merger. I'd like to put this at rest so that there is no concern that there has been any impairment to the net worth. There has been no impairment. All right. So essentially, this is accelerated amortization that's gone to your P&L. Where then would the number have stood if we account for this move? Accelerated, accelerated uh, impairment of goodwill, not of loan assets. Uh, number two, with regard to what this number could have been, um, uh, had uh, uh, this impairment not been done, uh, as as it disclosed in the books, uh, rupees. Uh, 153 crore would have been the profit after tax, uh, but I must point out that of the 153 crore also, there was rupees 72 crores of, uh, of uh, one-time tax credit we got to the p &L. Otherwise, the core profit, uh, the profit before tax, is the, which is the best measure to evaluate under these exceptional items, the profit before tax was rupees 95 crore for this quarter. All right, there's some concern now, as far as the asset quality the goes. For the group. All right, point taken. You know, just a word on uh, the asset quality. We've seen an uptick. It's a marginal one, but still it's up at about a 1.97% versus a 1.63% sequentially for your gross NPA. And in spite of the kind of provisions that you've undertaken, we've also seen an uptick coming in for the net NPA number. Just help us understand uh, the slippages. Where do they come from? If you could break it up for us. Where are you seeing pockets of stress? Uh, uh, thank you, but once again, I request you not to connect provisions to this number because we, we saw the number. But uh, with regard to this uh, increase of net NPA from 1.6% um, uh, uh, to 1.97%, uh, I must point out that capital first, uh, as you uh, know, is bringing in close to about 30,000 crores of loan book and close to about a 2% is the gross NP of capital first, uh, which by itself uh, is, is a pretty good number, as you know, uh, considering the, the space capital first loan book is usually dealing in, you know, re relatively higher yield uh, uh, customers in the small and medium enterprise space. 
uh, the gross NPF of 2% is a pretty stable number and that 2% on 30,000 crores close over 600 crores that gets added to the, uh, to the net NPA. So it's nothing alarming just like you see the NII going up because of merger of capital first, you see the uh, income line going up, you see the fee income going up, like that you see the NPA number going up by close to 600 crores but it's normal course of business of capital first that got merged to the balance sheet. So it's not to be seen as an item. Now onwards you should start comparing the numbers quarter on quarter from now on. If you compare this number with any prior quarter, either sequential or one year back, really this number of yours is not comparable. All right. So going forward then, can we expect the number to come down compared to the current quarter? Uh, well, I see no reason why there should be any, uh, any reason why these numbers uh, uh, should be under stress because we believe that the retail loan book which is largely brought in by Capital First is a very uh, seasoned book, uh, has been seasoned over multiple cycles uh, through demonetization, through GST implementation, through interest rate cycles going up and we feel very confident about that. As far as the wholesale book is concerned of uh, IDFC Bank, uh, that is erstwhile IDFC Bank, that book is also stable and, um, uh, and the necessary provisions have been taken in the last few quarters. So together, put together, uh, I don't see a, 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 you know, any major problem around the corner. Uh, you know, this is business, I, I, I can't precisely predict exactly what's coming precisely next, next quarter, but uh, directionally speaking, I don't see... Uh,